Hi everyone, this is Olola Day. Thank you for joining me on Lola Farms TV. I just wanted to see the video of the mother of 10 year old girl of Christland uh, School student. Uh, she is trying to explain of what actually happened uh, in Dubai. Uh, if you have seen my channel for the first time, please kindly subscribe to this channel. And my returning subscriber, thank you very much for coming back to watch this channel. God bless you guys. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. My child attends Chrisland School, VGC. Okay. Good. Good evening, mothers. Good evening to everybody, to fellow Nigerians. Please, I am making out this cry to everyone to help me out. About a month ago, I was on my way out of Lagos. So I got a call from Mrs. Azike, a head teacher from Chris land so she called me that she needed to see me I said okay that I'll come when I return back so two days after I came to the school when I got to the school I met her with two other women in in her office and they introduced me as one introduced herself as Mrs. Ke, uh, Mrs. Kemi I don't I can't remember her son name and the other one. So that they came from Queensland headquarters. I said okay, is there a problem? They said no. That they just wanted me to know that my daughter whom I left in their care that they took to Dubai that she she had a kiss with a boy and the boy also kissed her. So they found out that they got that uh, kissing thing from true and dear. So I said, okay, if it is that, that I will curtail, that what they wanted me to do was for me to take her phone from her so that she won't, they won't keep practicing that. I said, okay, if it's just that, that I will collect, I was going to get the phone from her. So if there was any other thing, they said no. Even Mrs. Kemi told me that I should not tell my husband that it is not everything women discuss or discloses to their husband. So I said, oh, okay, no problem. As long as this is uh, just kissing and that I will caution my daughter. So I left them. Then I didn't hear anything from them again. The girl was going. I thought everything was fine. Not until after two to three weeks that we had that conversation mrs azike the head teacher now called now sent me a link that she wanted us to have a zoom meeting by 5 pm i said okay that i, would, I was going to join them so by the time so by the time i i locked on i did not see anybody i had to call her that i did not see anybody on lunch now said okay she was going to contact the rest people i said okay so she they we had that meeting there were many people, boards of directors, which you know, I was even the one asking them, what is your name, sir? What can you introduce yourself? And so one particularly said that his name is Aki. So the Aki was the one, like the head, the person leading the, the meeting. He began by saying, if there is no forgiveness, you know, there won't be sin. If there is no sin, there won't be forgiveness. You know, he was speaking in parable at a time. I had to scratch. I said, what are you talking? What are you people discussing that you are just, you know? He now said, no, that uh, they just wanted to do a follow-up to ensure that that um, I have uh, withdrawn Julian's phone and to check on how Julian is doing. I said, okay, Julian is fine. But he now made a comment. He said, uh, when it happened, I said, sir, what happened? He said, Julian did not tell you. I said, no, Julian did not tell me anything. So on that, I'm sure they have the record of that uh, Zoom 
meeting. So I was screaming at them. I said, tell me what. I don't understand. Julian, did anything happen? Julian said no. So I said, okay, as it is now, I don't even know what you people are talking about. But if he extends more than this, that my husband will definitely know about. But the way people are calling me that, I'm not comfortable with it. So at the end, we finish the the meeting and we left. They didn't tell me anything. I went on my own. So the day after, some a parent, a parent called me after we had that Zoom meeting the next day that please uh, that she needed to see me that it is very very urgent so i had to go to her house when i got to her house she said something has been trending in chris land that which i am not even aware that she has told them that if this woman knows that that she doesn't think i am aware of this incident so the woman now called me that look at this video see what is trending in chris land that all the parents are aware so immediately I informed my husband, look at what is going on. So we began to call Mrs. Azike. She refused to pick her call. I called her more than 20 times. She didn't respond to the call. But later, I think she spoke with my husband and told him that she doesn't know anything if such a thing existed. So that was how we began. I even began to beat my daughter that, how, why would this happen? What is going on? So as we were beating her, the girl now said, Mommy, please, can I talk to you? I said, okay, what is it? She said that the Chris Land, Mrs. Azike, threatened her not to speak out. That, they sh that she should not speak out. So she narrated how it happened, how they abandoned them in hotel, how the school left them, and how she got you know, into this thing that is happening now. So even on our behalf, they have been coming to have meeting. They've been sending delegates from their headquarters to have meeting with my daughter. Without my consent, I was not aware. We were not informed. So please, I am begging Nigerians to help me. Help me because Chrisland was trying to hide this issue. Chrisland was trying to push out push us out of the way and my daughter was going psychologically you know insane please i need help as a mother i am begging fellow nigerians to help me please that is my cry please so as a mother and the parts that Chris Land played to cover up this issue, this rape issue. Chris Land, on the day of Mother's Day, I was in school. We were all there, not knowing that they had other people, other delegates that came to interrogate my daughter. As soon as we finished that Mother's Day, I left. And they took my daughter elsewhere to go and interrogate her without my consent. Coach. Coach. Se secondly, they've been threatening my daughter that if she speak out that they are going to, to kill her. That it is a man's world. That she should keep quiet. She shouldn't disclose to me. And my daughter was dying in silence. I didn't know. Every day when she's going to school, I'll be forcing her, Julian, come out. I'll be telling her, come outside, come outside. This child won't want to go to school. Even a teacher, Mr. Timothy, her class teacher was calling her a stupid girl, useless girl. In the midst of other children, in the midst of other students. Please help me. They took this girl, took her to go and do pregnancy tests without me knowing, without the father knowing, and lied to her that they were taking her for COVID test. They took them, they took her almost three times for COVID test. Please, is it possible? Do they use blood sample for COVID test? Do they use urine for COVID test? And I did not know, not until this thing came up. 
and to crown it all because we have started confronting them because we have started telling them that we are aware of what they what has happened they now sent her a suspension letter after i carried my daughter handed her over to you and you people were begging me that she should come we paid a lot for her to go to that trip with you and you got there left them uncared for please help me i need help i need help my daughter is not okay please i need help if there is any way you people can help me please help me i need help please So, um, when I was uh, asking my daughter to explain to me what happened, my daughter said that they went out to in the morning to have breakfast, and one of the boys, Kachi, begged her that she should borrow him her, but, um, her phone charger. So she gave Kachi the charger. Then, later in the evening, I think after they had dinner in the evening, the Kaji now called her room that she should come and pick up her charger. So she went there. When she got, she went to the place to get the charger. When she got there, they opened the door and one of them asked her to take her charger, to take her charger from the toilet. That it was when she entered the toilet that they now had jacked her, told her to drink to take a, a substance so they were all under the influence of drug so the, the after that that she did not know what she was doing again so that was how she, that was what she narrated to me and they told her to be climbing them and somebody stood and was videoing them and was posting it out so 